praise the Lord, glory, glory. Honor you this morning, hallelujah. Oh, we honor you this morning, hallelujah. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning. Hallelujah to all the prayer warriors and assessors, gatekeepers out there, those truth seekers, those who are hungry and thirsty for God's righteousness this morning. We thank you this morning for joining us this morning, 6 a.m. for the School of Healing Virtual Wellness Center this morning, mandated by God. Amen. Because he saved us, we saved. Because he healed us, we are healed. Therefore, he is our praise. So we rise this morning, number one, to give the Lord praise for what he's already done, what he's doing, and what he's yet to do. He's yet healing us, making us whole, making us well, giving us the power and the authority of his word, putting it in our mouth and our hearts and our lives, that we may be able, amen, to build a future, strive and aim to build a future of optimal overall wellness, a better future, amen. And having gone through things, we've learned some lessons, we've had some takeaways, and God has just allowed us, since he mandated this after healing us of cancer and bringing us back, amen, from a life-threatening automobile accident and just many, many other challenges, amen, along the road to the recovery. But more importantly, we've learned some lessons. We've learned about the power and the authority that God has put in us, amen, to be able to build, to do our part. We say that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Well, God gives us that ability. He releases that power and that authority. The authority is his word. And when his word is in us, amen, we might not sin against God. When we sin against God willfully and willingly, then that takes away from our power. But when we hide God's word in our heart that we might not sin against God because we have God's spirit in us. And the Bible says, great is he that's in us and he that is in this world. We have the power of life and death in our tongue. And we can declare and speak those things that be not as though they already are. Because in the eyes of God, it's already happened. We have 66 books of prophetic word, the voice of God, how he speaks to us these days. And within that word is contained the power of what we call the gospel and to salvation for all who shall believe but how can they believe except there be a preacher and how can we preach or teach a man unless we be sent by god called by god anointed by god and sent by god amen because we know he sent his word jesus christ the living word of god we have the logos the written word of god but jesus was manifested as as the word of god incarnated made flesh dwelling among us so he came and he healed everywhere he went but when he went back to the father he sent us the spirit of truth to teach us what he had done to teach us what was going to happen what he was going to do so we embrace amen hallelujah the very thought that we can speak things that be not as though they are because of the power of God that is within us and because we have hidden his word in our hearts that we might not sin against God. There is no competition between the word of God and our words. His word always rises to the occasion. We found his word and as Jeremiah said, we did eat that word and that word of God, that inspired word, that doctrine that he gave us to live by, build our lives on, that great foundation that's already been laid by the apostles and prophets, the teachings of Jesus Christ. It's upon that word right there, that rock right there, we build our, our lives on an amen because the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Weapons will be formed, but they won't prosper because God raised up that standard, which is the things that he has spoken. He has declared. Those are the things. Those are the final authorities. And when that word is in us, then we have that power and authority. Amen. And that's how we build. Those are the building blocks. Those are the foundational stone the promises of god the benefits of god and when we declare that word amen goes out of our mouth just like it's god's mouth it does not come back void until it do what he pleased and the purpose to which he sent it he sent his word according to the book of psalms chapter 107 verse 20 the king james bible to heal our disease and rescue us from destruction so let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you this morning for sending your word sent jesus christ which is the living word of god incarnated made flesh full of 
full of grace and full of truth this morning. And God, he's still speaking to us. He's still building us and preparing us for a work in progress. He, he, he's begun a good work in us, God, and he will continue to perform that work as we come together on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. to open up your word because the Lord continues to do that work within us that he started and he will complete that work, Lord God. Hallelujah. We are the clay and he's the potter this morning. He's molding and shaping from the inside out, building us, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Natural man and women into spiritual men and women, God. So we give you praise this morning. We give you glory and honor because your word is spiritually discerned. And we discern this morning that as we deal with your word, even now we feel emboldened, we feel empowered, we feel confident, we feel like we have hope this morning. We feel like we understand that you have declared, beloved, I wish above all things that I would have prospered, be in health, and even as your soul prospered, it is your will and desire that our lives prosper because we know our adversary, the devil, come before to heal, steal, and destroy, Lord God, ceases these opportunities because he's like a roaring lion going to and fro seeking whom he may devour, but not so this morning because Jesus also said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Now in the him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think of him according to the power of God that worketh in us. Now, Lord, let that power work in us to strive and aim and build a future of optimal overall wellness and to teach and instruct others, God, as your spirit teach and instruct us, as your word enlighten us, help us to enlighten others, to teach others your word, God, and share with them the revelations, the mysteries unveiled of Jesus Christ, the judge of the living and the dead. So we thank you this morning and we praise you for this opportunity this morning. Bless our guests this morning. Bless our visitors this morning. Bless those who are on this morning with us, God. Thank you for being in the midst of two or three of us who've gathered together this morning in your name to grow, Lord, in the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, what you have to say, the final word. And so we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I'm, I'm feeling a little victorious this morning. Amen. And we just thank God for the victory this morning. Amen. We thank God this morning. He is, he's our savior. He's our God. He's our healer. He's our deliverer this morning. We thank God for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's yet to do. We have his word on it. And like we say, he has the final say in everything that pertains to life and godliness that he's given us that we may enjoy it. So thank you, Father. Praise you this morning. Amen. 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 All right, then. Well, I'm Pastor Lester Hayes this morning here with my lovely wife, Pastor Sharon Hayes, along with Pastor Eric and Phoebe Davis. We're a new Freedom Christian ministry and more than conquers for Christ's ministry. Amen. And we thank God this morning but just uh, the assembly of the saints this morning, coming together this morning to learn. And this morning, a uh, school of healing, uh, a, a, a topic or a thought statement that the Lord would just uh, put in my spirit, amen. It came into my mind. I was thinking about, you know, how we are able to walk in divine health and healing as God instructs us, as he gives us the the, you know, the confidence to be able to do that, the faith and the trust and the hope in him, the assurance, you know, uh, we walk by that faith, you know, that faith is God's word. We put the faith in God's word, the confidence, that trust, you know, that hope is in what he said. Amen. And uh, that releases power and authority in the believer. Amen. And I was thinking about that and I start to feel real good as I sat over there and read some scriptures. <clears throat> you know, I was trying to imitate Jesus because he was always found was his habit to read that word, to sit under that word, to hear that word. Even though he was the word, amen, he still sat under those teachers in the temples to learn more about what the prophets had prophesied. And it it, it did him good because he was able to walk from Caperna all the way down to Jerusalem for the feast. And he did miracles and signs and wonders as he walked. And I didn't see uh, too many times. I'm, I'm pretty sure he stopped and ate for his physical strength. But I just thought about, man, they didn't have Uber. They didn't have, you know, public transportation. That, that was all in their feet. And they didn't have the best walking shoes. They didn't have them Skeeter walking shoes and them, them Nikes and name brand shoes, man. And they didn't have them New Balance, them combat boots. They just walked, you know, and, and it was 
rough terrain back then. They didn't have the grassy roads. They were dirt roads, you know, and they walked, man, from place to place. But they were healthy. They were healthy. You know, and he had entourage and a crowd following him. And I said, I wonder why they they were they were able to help to help to be healthy to do that. And uh, the Lord just reminded me because they had the word of God with them. You know, having not long been, been with me and didn't recognize that he was the son of man. He was the word of God sent down. For, I love that because in the book of John, the first chapter it said he was with them full of grace and truth. And they did not even recognize him. It's very on people. And long as they followed him, they had strength, man, to get to where they were going. They observed miracles, signs and wonders that followed him and followed them. Amen. I don't know whether they fully believed as they followed him and watched and observed some from afar, some up close. But it was something about, you know, the, 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 the health of those people. And then when he came across uh, various types of diseases and whatnot, the Bible said he just was touched by it. He healed. Them. You know, he he was he was just moved by, you know, what he saw, and what he heard. And he did something about it. And. I noticed how he always told them something. Do you believe? And they would say, yeah, and he healed them. And then he said something else after that. Now go and don't do the same thing again that caused you to be like that, which was, you know, don't go and sin, go sin no more. And then he didn't stop there. He prayed because he knew what was in their hearts. That father would help their doubt and unbelief. Mm -hmm. And so he eliminated all those challenges if they chose to receive his instructions that challenge their power and their authority to walk in divine health and healing. And so here it is today, a lot of us, are, you know, we'll walk this walk of faith through life, this, this pathway, this journey that we're on our way home, going to heaven, you know, to be with the Lord eternally, living our life today in light of that eternity. And we have received power, you know, after that we have, you know, we have believed he's given us power to become the sons of God. You know, and, and that's not gender specific. That's just saying that, you know, as humans, we now have power and authority granted and given to us by the Father to, to walk this walk of faith, to walk this journey uh, that we're on, this highway that that, that that none can walk up there but the pure and holy and the righteous, you know, the saved. And so we thank God for that. Amen. Got to keep this word in our mouth and near us and in our hands and access to it before our eyes so we can constantly see it and be reminded. Now, they should have fixed their eyes on Jesus, who was the living word. I mean, he's not physically here, but he's spiritually here. And we got to keep our eyes fixed on this word where the promises are so we don't forget all these benefits. Amen. As we build this future of optimal over our wellness, as we strive and aim to do it. Amen. You're talking about physical wellness and spiritual wellness and emotional wellness and financial wellness and occupational wellness and environmental wellness and social wellness. Amen. Because he said, beloved, I wish this. I wish above all things that I would have prospered and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Even now this morning, I, I feel I feel emboldened. I feel that something is taking place in our inner man right now. Something is going on in our lives right now as we feed our spirits this morning. Amen. So let's get in here, man, and take a look at what the Lord gave me to share with you this morning. Uh, I want to use uh, uh, for a scripture text this morning, two passages of scripture this morning to kind of share a few thoughts and make a few statements about building this future of optimal overall wellness, a better future. We'll come away after this word this morning uh, a lot more spiritually healthy, amen, fortified, uh, you know, encouraged some things, reinforced or reaffirmed. Because when God's word goes out of these mouths of believers, man, it don't come back, boy, they do what he's pleased and take care of the purpose to which he sent it. And we already know why he sent that word, amen. So let's just see what he sent to us this morning. I'll do the scripture text out of the book of Romans chapter 13, verse 1, and out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 2 and verse 3 of the King James Bible this morning. And I want to speak from a subject. I love to give text and then give subject as God give it to me. That's just kind of the, the, the method or the mythology that God gives me. It's, I have to frame it up so it's easy for people to understand, you know, because you give the subject, you know, amen, and you give the text, Amen. What you're talking about is just easy for people to track and to follow. And I try to do that 
uh, persistently and consistently so that I am consistent. I don't do this one day and then the next day. I try to follow that framework, you know, the text and then, you know, the, the subject, tell you what I'm going to talk about, then talk about it. So here's the subject this morning. What is the power and authority we have that we possess and given to us by God to build our future of optimal overall wellness? And see, when we partake of it, you know, it's easier now to, to help others to do the same thing. If they if they do, I mean, it's just like Jesus. When he walked, they saw the miracles. He told them that they were going to be able to do the same work and greater works. Now, it was up to them to believe it. I mean, they, they were right there getting that instruction. And so we're right here this morning getting this instruction. But after today, it's up to us to do what. Romans 13 and 1 say we can, the book of Romans chapter 13, verse 1, the King James Bible say we can do. It's up to us to take what the book of Isaiah prophesied in chapter 11, verses 2 and 3, the King James Bible. It's up to us to be not forgive for hearers, but doers of the work. And as we just heard, there is power and there's authority that embolden us to be able to walk in what God said. And he tells us in the book of Psalm chapter 69, I want to say verse 19, the King's Bible, don't forget all the benefits. We're going to need them. Ask the Holy Ghost. He says, remember the justice blessed. Bring that word back. When something something comes on us and try to cause us harm, uh, let's bring what the word said. Let's bring that promise back. You know, let's give it back to God. Put him in remembrance of it. But we've been taught and we know he's watching over his word to perform it. And he want to be put in, in remembrance of it. We can, we can just declare it out in the open. Because the power of life and death is in our tongue, you know, that standard gets raised up when we do that against whatever is attacking us. Because the enemy goes to and fro, he's shooting them fiery darts, you know, and we have to put on the whole arm of God that we can ward those things off and quench those fiery darts. Because those fiery darts are doubt and unbelief, and they hit hard sometimes if we don't have that word of God to stand on. If that's our standard, and we see God raising up that standard when the enemy comes in like a flood, we see that standard. That word comes up and guards against those those things. And we take that shield of faith and we ward off those fiery darts. Amen. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. We put on the living word of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We take the belt of truth and put it around our waist. And we take the sword of the spirit, you know, in our faith to ward off those things, to fight those things, to go on the attack, you know, amen. And our feet be showered with the preservation of the gospel of peace. And we're walking in peace because we know what the word says. That's the peace we have. We're at peace because we know what the word says. And we're walking in that peace that comes down from the Prince of Peace. We're peacemakers. And we're going to see God in the midst of it. That's what he said. The peacemakers are going to see God. We see him in the midst of it. If we see him now, we'll see him then. But we got to see him all the way to the end as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. And do to the end. Being healthy, you know, living our life in light of eternity, you know, being spiritually emboldened. Amen. And it carries over to physical health and physical wealth. Amen. Praise God. And so what is that power and that authority, though, that we have that is available to us, access to, to build our future of optimal overall wellness? And and not only us, Joshua said that's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. You know, that's it. We're going to walk in that power and authority. We're going to be blessed. We're going to see our seed, not begging for righteousness, but our seed is going to be delivered. Amen. Walking in victory. Our seed, seed is going to be blessed. We're seeing. This is why we can declare what Joshua declared in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15, the King James Bible. As for me and my household, yes. we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to honor God. And so uh, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 2 and 3, the King James Bible, let me just read that. It's so much packed in here. I just I felt the authority. I felt the power surge me when I was reading this last night. And it says, in the spirit, that's now that's talking about the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. It says, in the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Whew, my God. Anybody who 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 want that power and that authority, amen, to walk in that divine health and healing, to walk in what God said we can walk in, those things that be not as though they are. It's called walking by faith and not by sight. Some folks like to say, I see it if I, I believe it if I see it. But if we don't believe it, we'll never see it. The Spirit of God, it says right there, He said, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him that believe. And it said, 
the spirit of wisdom. There's a, there's, there's another, there's more authority, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. He says, when you get what you like wisdom, ask God for it, who gives it to us liberally. Yep. Book of James said that. I, I mean, you know, hey, uh, uh, Solomon was in that position. Had all that money, all that wealth, all that power, gifts coming in from everywhere. Had the anointing of his father on him, the call of God to build the temple, but he built it for the wrong reason, mm -hmm. full of idolatrous images and things that he had to worship. Mm -hmm. And the man died young, but he had a lot of wisdom. He said, "You know, my, I'm, you know, I'm going to drink. I'm going to live it up, man. I'm going to enjoy these big pennies, these physical things, but." You know, thank God for the book of, 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 of wisdom he gave us Proverbs. His whole life was vanity on vanity, more vanity. You know, but here we are, man. We don't have to go down that path. We take these wisdom, these lessons of wisdom, and, and, and what Isaiah prophesied, he said the spirit of wisdom and understanding. This is also what rests upon us, uh, the spirit of counsel and might. There's another benefit, another blessing. Look at what God is arming us with. Look at what he says when his spirit rests upon us. Look at what follows. So it's, it's a lot here, man, contained in this prophetic word. Mm -hmm. So this is why we said we find the word of God and we eat it. Like Jeremiah said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 16, the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. And I see now, I see the picture now as he said, it, it, it has become joy and rejoicing. See, he had to take it, eat it, put it inside, hide it there that he might not sin against God. And look at what he said that word afforded him. Look at how his soul prospered. Look at how our soul prospers. And then it manifests in us, you know. The word of God brings that 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 spiritual authority and power that gets released in us. Amen. Embolden us, raise up a standard against all these reports. And we have to believe the report of the Lord. And his report says we're healed. We're filled. We're sealed. We have the victory that God has given us. And we don't fight for it. We fight from that position of faith. That faith, that 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 fight we fight is a good fight of faith. We put our faith in God, our healer, who makes our bitter experiences sweet. He heals all of our disease and forgive all of our sin and iniquity. Man, that's powerful, man. But look at what he says here. Spirit of counsel and might. Let the word be our counselor. He said that we found his word and it has become a, 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 a our counselor, our delight. He sent his word to give us life, to revive us and give us life. At the entrance of that word, Lord, they give it light. You know, we, we found that word and it has become the spirit of counsel and might, you know, that we might not sin against God that we might not sin against God. Book of Psalm chapter 51, verse 6, I want to say, that we hide that word in our hearts. God, we want God. David wanted God to cause him to know, to know truth in his inner parts and wisdom in his innermost being, that he might not sin against God. That was, that was the key, you know? And he said the spirit, I noticed now every one of these here phenomenal uh, things that God has given us through the, through the word that through his spirit that rests on us, amen. And his spirit is also the spirit of truth, the spirit of wisdom. Look, look at every one of these starts out by saying the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding. Whew, my God, in the fear of the Lord. Can you feel the authority that's coming right now just by hearing this, just by, just by just in receiving this inheritance, receiving this gift from God, this wisdom from God, this knowledge from God. Can you feel it surging through your body right now? Can you feel it working inside right now? Can you feel the joy that's being released right now? Can you feel that weeping is over with for the night and joy is springing forth right now and the world can't give it to you? Is it like fire shut up in your bones right now? Can you feel the release and the emboldening the power of God right now surging through us? I can feel it. I can feel it all up and down my spine. I can feel it all throughout my body right now. It's in my mind. So, you know, I'm thinking about it. And so as a man thinketh in his heart, the book of Proverbs written by Solomon, chapter 23, verse 7, the King James Bible talks about as a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. See, we're becoming right now. We're becoming right now that spirit of wisdom. We're becoming that spirit of knowledge. We can feel the might and the power of God, not by my spirit, not by my power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. Feel it. The spirit that's resting upon us right now as we're partaking of this word this morning. 
And he said, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. My God, we just got to put faith in what God said. You know, I can look at scars where I was hurt, injured, look in the mirror, don't like that. I could Pastor Sharon tell me about my, where I had my, and they put, put a stitched step up in my head. There's been a, a, a change there, but see inside, see none of that physical change out there should change our heart. No situation or circumstance should change what we believe in our heart. You see it, you acknowledge it, but you know what? God got the final say, you know, yes, we, we, we went through those things and we learned some things. We drew closer to God. All these things that he said that we possess kicked in. They're kicking in now. They're bringing us back now better than before, giving us a testimony. So now we can overcome our adversaries, our enemies by the te- word of our testimony. This is the word of our testimony because the spirit of God rests upon us. He's inside of us. And the Bible says, great is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the King James Bible. So we, we, we have that, that medicine bomb in us and it's and it's 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 permeating us from the inside out and there's there's a manifestation in what we say we don't speak sickness we speak healing to the sickness we speak wellness you you know because that's what's in us god's ability rests upon us that power that authority has been given and granted to us amen and we see it right here in the word. And he said, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. We're going to hear all kinds of things. You know, doctors going to tell us stuff. We're going to see stuff. But whose report do you believe? Mm. I believe the report of the Lord. We know what it says. You know, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace. Where is it at? It's upon him. Okay. And with his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. Now, do you believe that report? That's what our ears should be hearing. Look at what he says. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ear. That word reprove there kind of like talks about uh, correcting, you know, telling you what you did wrong. And if you, if God told you that he's a healer and we don't believe that, but we the doctor is the healer. Then we got to we got to be that's 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 wrong according to the scripture. We got to hear the faith of God, which is faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Book of Romans, chapter ten, verse seventeen, the King James Bible. That's why it's so important to put the word in our hearts and hide it there that we might not sin against God. Why? Because I'm gonna open my mouth and say something. I might say I'm in pain. I might say you know I'm sick. We gonna say something. But why not say what does say the Lord? This is what he's trying to get us to do. Put that word, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what he's trying to get us to do. You know, say what God says, you know, and don't judge after your eyes what you see. I see how you've been over. I see how you're hurting. I see how you did. But in the name of Jesus, with his stripes, I declare that you heal. Pray that prayer of faith. The prayer of faith heals and raises us up. God raises us up. When he sees faith, he, he's pleased. We come to God, we got to believe. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 of the King James Bible says, anybody who come to God must first believe. First. You know, that's the key right there to him saving us and we're saved, him healing us and we're healed. Therefore, now you're my praise, God, because I know if I said it, it's going to happen. Yes. Because it's God's word. And he's going to honor his word because he watched over to perform it. And then we... Uh, share with you verse uh, the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 1 through 6 of the King James Bible let's delve into this now see what it says it says let every soul be subject unto the higher power now I want to just deal with are we talking about power and authority understand where the power and authority comes from now he said be subject to it but there's only one power and authority that is reigned supreme now you have some lower, some lower levels, but don't stop there when you start thinking about healing. You got to go above that. There's 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 hospitals that's been granted charters to provide health care to people. Take full advantage of that. Be subject to that. There's law and order out there to keep you from going out here hurting yourself, 
be subject to that. But when it comes down to that power and authority over all sickness, all disease, you got to be more subject to that power. So here, this is a this is a general like an umbrella. You're talking about all power. Primarily, a lot of times people just look at that as though he's talking about the government, the law, you know, the powers that be. You know, the Bible said that there's powers that be. We don't we don't fight against. We don't wrestle against principalities, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are powers. We're just subject to them. Why? Because they're in this life. Trials and tribulation come through those things in this life. So we got we, we are subject to them. That's what the Lord is saying. Don't be governed by them. Just be subject to them. Know that they're there. In this world you live in, you're going to have these powers. They're going to be formed against you. They're going to work against you. Some of them might work for you if you understand how they work and you don't abuse them. You know, you just give to them what, what belongs to them, but you don't give them no praise. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm your healer. I'm your savior. I'm, I'm your praise. You just be subject to those things, but you don't get stuck there. When it comes down to some supernatural, some miraculous, those powers can't provide it. So don't put your trust and confidence in them. Just be subject to them. And then you move on. I'm taking it to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to the higher power for my supernatural, miraculous miracle of healing. I'm calling on the one I know can make bitter experiences sweet. I'm believing that report that Isaiah prophesied. And so he said, just <clears throat> let it, he said, you know, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, all of them, all the way to the top. He is a preeminent one. He reigns supreme. And it says, look to the hill from which cometh your help. Our help comes from the Lord. Not not Capitol Hill, you know, not not the governor's mention, you know, but we look, we look to the hill from which cometh our help. Our help comes down from the Lord, book of Psalms, chapter 146, you know, verses one through six tells us that for there is no power but of God, no power to heal, make us whole, make us well, but of God, no power to do miracles, miraculous undertaking, supernatural encounters, but of God. That's it. All these other powers are limited in their scope, limited in what they can provide and what they can do. Just be subject to them, acknowledge them, but let's go higher in God, in the Lord, but of God. And he, he is all of it. He uses it to his, to his will, to his purpose, to his pleasure. Everything belongs to God anyway. No power, no authority out there that be it does not belong to God. God will use them as he chooses. He don't have to. But if he choose to do it because everything belongs to him, anyway, he'll use Satan if he wants to, to be a blessing to you. <clears throat> you know, he says the powers that be are what? Ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinances of God. So you, you see the law coming down, resist so many folk right now, man, are losing their life, trying to resist, trying to be tough, you know, and all of that, man. And, you know, they got a body cam, so they have to film stuff now. So you don't have to be out there with a the phone all up in their face. What's your bag number and all that crazy? Mm -hmm. Too many people are losing their life when God wanted them to live because they're, you know, they're <clears throat> they're trying to be anti whatever, anti law. When God said, "Look, I ordained them to be out there," you know. You know, so just be very careful. Be wise as a serpent when you're dealing with the law. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinances of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. You know, for rulers are not a terror to good works. So just do good. Be a peacemaker. You know, be merciful. Thank you, Mr. Officer. What did I do wrong, Mr. Officer? Don't give them no hard time. And then in, in some cases, that still might not be enough. So we don't create a mess out here. Everybody now is on edge. They're afraid of you. You're afraid of them. Everybody jumpy right now. So everything that God is teaching right here to do through the scriptures, you got to remember what we're trying to do. We're striving for a better future of optimal overall wellness. All these areas that we talked about, we want to be around to benefit from those areas. We're doing all this work. We're putting in all this work. You know, and I'm hoping somebody will get a hold of what we're teaching this morning and learn from this, that there is a better way. You know. And he says, you know, good works, but 
receive themselves damnation for the rulers said the rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil make sure that evil ain't in us ain't permeating in us i'm gonna get even some folk go out looking for an opportunity to film something you know try the system so they can sue somebody you know it's just crazy right now will thou then not be afraid of the power not afraid so much and overreact or retaliate remember vengeance is god but don't don't operate in the fear of man what they can do to you but operate in the fear of god you know that reverence for god i'm afraid that i might disappoint god Keep that in mind. I don't want to disappoint you, Lord. In other words, as the police is approaching, just start praying. Call on the name of Jesus. Speak peace over the situation. You have the power and authority in you to do that. Wait, wait, y'all want now. Y'all profile, y'all racially profiling me. I already got predetermined, premeditated what you're going to say and what you're going to do and how you're going to react. So will that not be afraid of the power? Uh, be, be, be restrained. Well, what couldn't happen? We, we got evidence of what worst case and scenario. Do not that which is good and that shall have praise of the same. Because we know who fight our battles. Speak peace over the situation. Release that power and authority. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. So speak, speak good. We might receive good. You're so good. We might reap good. But if thou, I've been stopped by police before and things went to our favor because we gave them off of their respect. They were white, some were black. It didn't matter to us. Spanish, we done dealt with all kinds. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he bears not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Lord for lawbreakers. And if we don't break the law, we should be good. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Go a little deeper than just thinking that everybody is, every weapon formed against you is going to prosper over you. Trust God to raise up that standard. For this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. It's the book of Romans 13, verse 1 through 6 of the King James Bible. So know the facts about these things, you know, before we go out here and just start assuming that we know. Understand. I used to tell people, know how the system works. Mm -hmm. And if the system ain't going to work for your good, try not to enter into that system. You don't want your name to be uh, a lawbreaker. You don't want, you know, to be... You know, that every, every time they see your car, they recognize you as a hell raiser, tr troublemaker, a speeder, you know, a lawbreaker. Now they all know you, your name circling through the system. You got a record now, you know, it was created by you. You the one got stopped and, and resisted arrest. And you have a right and all that, you know. Don't let those things come into play if you can restrain yourself. So we're going to go ahead and bring this in. So what is the power and the authority that we possess as believers? You know, not, not pastors, not, you know, title wearers and all of that. So sometimes we get caught up in that. That's limited. That power right there is limited. You know what I'm saying? It's very limited. Some people don't believe that it's limited. They think they can just do whatever. They take, I can do all things through Christ, out of control, totally out of control. It's all the things that God has ordained as we saw. You know, even for the law out there. Only what God has ordained. Okay? And so what is that power? Let me just make this statement here and we finish. The power and authority of a believer reveals the greater power, the greater ability, the greater authority that the Lord has given to the church of the body of Christ. The believer has been empowered by the Lord Jesus Christ to overcome the devil in the world. Don't yeah. ever forget that. We've been empowered by God to do that. Through that spiritual power and authority, it's God-given, that God-given right to receive and use God's power that flows from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. 
So, Father, we thank you this morning. We praise you this morning. We feel emboldened. We feel healthy. We feel but that we possess right now, God, the power to declare and to speak things to be not as though they are. So we thank you this morning. We speak health to our bodies. We speak health to our finances. We speak health, Lord God, to our emotional status this morning. We speak uh, health and wellness this morning, God, throughout our our, our day and our lives, yes, oh God, over yes, our finances, yes. over our environment, over our emotions this morning, over our jobs and careers this morning, over our social status this morning. We, we declare it this morning according to your word as we walk in this morning, Lord God, what we're speaking now, God, we will walk in it, God, because we've declared it out of our mouth this morning. And now by faith, God, we walk in the victory this morning that, that we we walk, God, as victorious people in what yes. the victory that you have given us through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you this morning, God. Use whatever is out there, God. Use whatever is out there to accomplish your purpose in your will. You have ordained all authority, God. And so, Father, help us to be subject to the laws of the land. Help us to be subject to governmental laws and all those who have rule over. We pray for them this morning that they too will be subject to the higher power, which is you, God. Let them know, God, that the only power and authority they have is that that you have ordained, God. Yes. And it's, God, to be able, God, to, to deter evil, God, to be able to deal and root out evil, God, and to arrest lawbreakers, God. Amen. And it will not break into law, God. We shouldn't be subject, God, to targeting, oh God, and racial profiling, God. So we come against these things and render them powerless and harmless and ineffective. And we speak life over our young generation, God. We speak subject that they will be subject to the laws, God. They'll put away those cameras, Lord God. Hallelujah. And stop using them, Lord God, to antagonize law officers, God. But if they need to, God, then let them know, do you mind if I film you? Do I mind if I film this? Just stop, Lord. And, and ask God the question, do you have a, a, a body cam? Is it on right now? I would like to, to have it on right now. So this can be recorded, Lord God. Let us do it peacefully, Lord God. And so, Father, we give you praise, Lord, and honor right now. God, for building the future of optimal overall wellness and being able to answer the statement and the question, Lord God, the power and authority that we have given to us by God to build our future of optimal overall wellness is our prayer this morning. We thank and praise you for it this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, God, this prayer. Amen. Amen. All right, then, y'all. We are going to end right there this morning. Amen. And we'll now have...